this podcast discusses true crime, which may entail violence and other material intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. And it's Lexi. And sorry that we've been kind of MIA. Um, we've both just been really busy and the podcast hasn't taken precedence, but we're back. We have a new episode for you guys. Um, so we'll just dive into it because it's kind of, let me see if I can minimize it a little bit so I can actually see the screen. Oh, good Lord. We need multi-monitor setups, truly. So the funny thing about that is Eric got me one, but I didn't like it because I didn't have enough space on my desk and it drove me nuts. There we go. Alrighty. So it's kind of a, (laughs) it's like a cult today, Ooh. but it's a school too. It's an MLM school cult. (laughs) What? It's a school (laughs) cult? We're talking about the modern mystery school. Have you heard of this? Oh my God. Why does it sound like something that would be on an episode of Scooby Doo? It the honestly could be. School. By the way, guys, we don't have a guest uh, host today. This is just how I sound. That's also why we didn't record last week. I'm recovering from laryngitis. <laughs> I don't want people listening to the episode be like, where was Lexi and who was that person? <laughs> it's me. She just started smoking 10 packs a day, is all. <laughs> I'm doing the 100 vape challenge. <laughs> doctor says I got, Doctor says I got that dog in me. Not sure why he called it mesothelioma though. <laughs> uh, I feel so unserious being like, "All right, Back to the magical mystery school. <laughs> magical of, mystery school. Witchcraft and wizardry. <laughs> so, in the world, there are a total of seven mystery schools. Six of them are completely closed to the public, and the seventh one is the modern mystery school. Yeah, there's more than one. <sighs> okay. <laughs> So Sorry, my dog these... jumped into my lap. I was not saying what to you. She just... That's fine. <laughs> ...needs an ear scratch. There we go. So these schools have existed for thousands of years and are often associated with the occult. These schools are the Tibetan, Japanese, English, North American, Australian, Romanian, and African mystery schools. So I think it's kind of crazy that these have existed for thousands of years. Yeah, that's from insane. What I found. Like, and literally all over, would you say Tibet, Japan, Romania, the U.S.? England, and, Australia, Oh, England, Africa. Australia. Oh, my God. What part of Africa? I'm not sure. I don't okay. know where they're at exactly. Just because that's a really big place. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere. <laughs> we so arrive in Morocco and we're like, well, we'll find it any time now. I wonder where the North American one is. It's probably like in Disney World or something. Right, because North America is like also a big place. So it's kind of like, all right, where are we starting? <laughs> this is going to come after us now that I mentioned them. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. We get a cease and desist letter. Um, so each has its own origin, such as Lemuria, Middle Earth, Atlantis, Gods of Space, Northern Gods, and Lineage of King Solomon. So remember, Lemuria was from... Um, the love has one cult. So they believe okay. in Lemuria. That's it's just it. okay. like one of those. That's where people started, like Atlantis. It, one of those crazy places that they believe like people started. Middle mm. Earth isn't that from the like, Lord of the Rings? Yeah, like I think that's where the hobbits live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've never seen Lord of the Rings. Don't come after me. I've tried when I was younger. I'll have to try again. I just couldn't get into it when I was younger. I've somehow evaded so many people in my life being like, you've never seen Lord of the Rings? we got to sit down and watch all 19 hours of it or whatever. I'm like, that sounds awful. Like, we maybe start with like 20 minutes to see if I'm into it, and then we can maybe make make the commitment from there. But yes, I've also avoided seeing Lord of the Rings. But I have enough geek friends that I like kind of know the synopsis. Yeah, yeah. Um, So their site offered classes such as Awaken Thyself, Empower Thyself, Sacred Geometry, 
astral travel and spiritual intuition. I don't know what sacred geometry is. I was terrible at math. Uh, and sacred it, geometry. Let's take a peek. peek. Oh, Google says there's something sick. wrong. <laughs> don't like that. Ascribe symbolic and sacred meanings to certain geometric shapes and geometric proportions. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, I wonder if this is like in Merkabas and okay. Tree of life. I recognize that one. Oh, and the Merkaba. Yeah, I was right. Uh, basically they're, here you go. It's a bunch of pretty shapes. Oh, okay. Sacred geometry. Kind of looks like one of those things that like, whenever you put your pencil down, like the plastic thing, you just move in circles. Yeah. It's a spirograph. Yeah. That's, yeah is that what we were that's doing? Were we like. casting spells when we were like five? <laughs> let's see here uh today we are focusing on the modern mystery school which is an international organization that claims to train and certify healing practitioners and teachers in the tradition of the lineage of king solomon okay so so we'll start with the experience of one of the former students named bernice van eck in september 2014 she was a 33 year old that was once a fashion consultant at cape town so Bernice thought that at a young age, she possessed psychic abilities. And in 2006, she was troubled with dreams from the spirit world. She went to a medium who recommended that she go to the modern mystery school. She, she got Hogwarts kid. You're a wizard, Ari. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds believable with my, uh, with my vocal cords in the state they're in. Wow. <laughs> that was very, uh, on point. Thank you. <laughs> she went and it took her eight years to get to this next task. To get there, she spent hours upon hours in meditation and tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I, I don't have that kind of money to throw at a magical mystery school. It gets expensive. Um, so the task is that she and others were left in the forest of Mount Fuji for three days and three nights for meditation. Each just had one water bottle to last them for three days. No food, nothing else. Just the water bottle. Was it at least a big water bottle? I, I don't know. Hopefully, because that's a lot of, that's, that's a long time to go really without anything time. else. Yeah. So when the students came <laughs> off the mountain, she... <laughs> I'm sorry, Luna has something to add. There is a guest. There is a guest star in this episode. It's my dog. So when the students came off the mountain, they saw fresh graves had been dug. They were told to lay in them and then a plastic sheet was draped over them and they started to feel dirt being thrown onto them. She was unsure of how long this went on. Like she just kind of blacked out or something. She was like, I don't know if it's been hours, minutes, however long, but she was under the, under the dirt and eventually the sheet came off and she exited the grave. With this, she passed the test and went on to become a third step ritual master. Okay. Okay. I, I don't even have anything yet. I just, because I know that's you're just not one done. example. Yeah. That's oh, just one good. example of what they went through. Oh boy. I couldn't imagine being like put in a grave and like having dirt thrown on me. Like, I, I'm not claustrophobic, but the fact that the, my anxiety is like they're going to leave you here you're going to die in a grave right 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 and like that that like you know my my comorbid mental illness is one's gonna be like this is what's gonna happen and the other one's gonna be like oh so true bestie like that's <laughs> i would simply not survive so this school calls itself the harvard of metaphysics it has a major presence in canada the u.s japan south africa and brazil and it claims to have had students from over 60 countries, and its mission is creating peace on this planet by uplifting the hearts and minds of humanity. So it sounds like, like it, the way they present themselves, it's like wholesome, and like we're just a bunch of like hippies who are going to like use our crystals and healing abilities. Many such cases. I feel like we've been doing this podcast long enough that if someone comes to you and they're like, we're all about peace and love and crystal healing, you're just kind of like, where's the white supremacy? Like, where are you hiding it? <laughs> surprisingly i didn't see any outward supremacy it's just like hey Ma mainly oh okay you know um, you know what yeah a win is a win <laughs> all right Woohoo! and abuse and sexual exploitation but never we'll mind later <laughs> we'll get into that later i spoke too soon i'm putting the celebration back in my body 
<laughs> Students have come forward and said that it took at least $20,000 to reach a top rank and even more to keep going up to the pyramid. It kind of sounds like, doesn't Scientology like that? Yes, yeah, Scientology is, is exactly like that. It's not really, not really a thought. pyramid scheme. You know, it's more of like a, like a suspicious triangle. <laughs> Maybe something with a wide base and a point at the top. <laughs> uh, so former students claim to have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. So where are they getting all this money? Well, they are encouraged to start their own spiritual business and are offered classes such as marketing basics for professional light workers. There's there like multiple esoteric shops in my town. Like, do you think any of them are yeah. connected? Oh, probably. Oh, no. Like... I just went to a mind body spirit expo and I'm sure at least one of those like <laughs> booths was like part of this. This is amazing. So there are more than 900 certified practitioners worldwide with hundreds of schools affiliates, such as the sacred vibrations and sky spirit healing. They offer services such as psychic readings, crystal healings and exorcisms. Chris Critics of the school and former students claim that this school is actually a cult and a spiritual pyramid scheme that deals with psychological trauma, debt, and relationship breakdowns. And others spoke out about bullying and sexual exploitation. Well, yeah. You know what this is making me think of? Please tell me you've seen the thing where there's the, the alpha male boot camps. Mm -hmm. Where it's just a bunch of dudes who are paying like, like thousands of dollars to just go and be tortured and degraded by like other dudes because it'll turn them into alpha males or whatever and like so many people are dunking on it because they're like nothing screams alpha male like paying thousands of dollars to be dominated by another man <laughs> that sounds like a weird kink yeah and like like that's like, kink camp yeah and it's it's i mean that sounds also like a a, a scam like conspiracy theory like like you're just gonna cash in on like this this is cashing in on like wellness stuff that's cashing in on like a manosphere weirdness but at the end of the day all you need is an idea and to be half decent at marketing and you can convince people to give you thousands of dollars for anything that's true like it's so easy it sounds like to start a cult you just need to have like an idea that people will fall for and like right? make it a pyramid you have to make it fun for rich people, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> so, this school was founded by a man named Goody Gudnason. He was... Yeah, he was born in Iceland, May 9th, 1958. Oh, it's an Icelandic name. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he claimed his twin brother died 30 minutes after birth, and his spirit stayed with him to send him teachings from the spirit realm. Okay. <laughs> he claims to have read thousands of books ranging from alchemy and astrology to quantum physics and that he was descended from Thor, which I'm sure, I'm sure he's descended from Thor. He instructs his students to watch movies like The Matrix and Mary Poppins. I don't know. Why. Mary Poppins? Maybe, like, for the Maybe because she's magical. I guess. Like Matri Matrix, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But Mary Poppins, that one got me. <laughs> As a youth, he joined the mystery school in England, uh, which was the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Like, these are very dramatic names. Every name I've said so far is so over-the-top dramatic. What I thought originally when you had mentioned his name is I thought it was like a chosen name. Like I, you know how a lot of these people, they get in these wellness cults and they're mm -hmm. like, they pick a new name for themselves, like Feather Sunshine. Like that's what I thought. Like I yeah. thought, I thought he was born like Brad Johnson, you know, and he picked like Strawberry Fields. <laughs> <laughs> nope. That's just his Icelandic name, which is just kind of odd. I don't know if it's normal for Icelandic names to sound similar to the last names. Goodney Goodnason. Like it has like the same yes, like yeah. prefix. So I know this because believe it or not, I know this because of CrossFit. Um, so apparently the the naming tradition is um, for it to be the parent's name and then either son or daughter after it. Like for example, Annie Thor's daughter. Our father's name is Thor, so her last name is Thor's daughter. And then mm. it, like if she had a brother, his name would be like you know, John Doe Thorson. So that's like that's the Icelandic naming tradition. Okay. 
Um, he goes on to say that he had studied with many ancient mystery schools in Tibet, Africa, Transylvania, and Japan, and is a martial arts master, a doctor of metaphysics. He was awarded Poet of the Year and trainer to bodyguards of the Dalai Lama. He's got a, got a resume going. That's a rap sheet, yeah. He planned to open Iceland's first bodyguard school, which would be teaching firearms, map reading, and driving. However, this was short-lived, and months later, he opened a gym in Reykjavik, where he taught Fujika Do, which is a martial art that he created himself. Okay. And he offered, yeah, and he offered crystal readings and energy massage. I think I've seen people do that on TikTok Live. It kind of sounds like a Reiki, right? Yeah, well, it's Reiki's from, it more like, like Reiki. With your cheese. I'm sorry. Wait, it. Oh, cheese! Like the plural of chi. Yeah, not cheese. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I knew that's where your mind was going. I was like, "What do you mean, cheese?" Um, not long after, the police launched an investigation into a tournament where he that he hosted where video footage leaked showing kids boxing without protective equipment in 1995. He was acquitted of breaking the boxing ban, but he got one year suspended sentence for having an air rifle. After this, he left Iceland and moved to Ogden, which is an area on the edge of the Rocky Mountains in Utah, where he started money-making schemes. He met and married Lori Seacrest, who was a psychic and spiritual healer. Together they ran the Tri- Trilight Foundation. I spelled it wrong. Triolite Foundation, and sem- which was a seminar company that teaches techniques to create a mental state of peace and joy. And they sold products like the Elixir of Life, which was named Antimony, that claimed to open your connection to God. Isn't so isn't kind of- Antimony just a? It's just an element. I think so. Um, I couldn't find what was actually in it. Once again. Google. It's a rock. Unless they're just, it's they're calling it something. I think it was just called antimony. Like, it was probably something else. Oh, okay. It kind of, it kind of sounds, reminded me of, like, again, Love Has Won, where they had, like, their whole shop of all this stuff made with, like, colloidal silver and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colloidal silver is, like, really big in, like, the wellness community. I actually mm-hmm. did use colloidal silver, at, you know, as directed for a, a burn back in the day. Not, you know for whatever the heck people are it. doing for it now. Yeah, I just, you know, put it on a burn for, you know, every bandage change for like a two weeks or something. Hmm. Oh, good. Google suggestions. People also search for tin, lead, germanium, tungsten. Ooh. Got metal enthusiasts over here. In the next few years, they started offering classes in neuro-linguistic programming, which I'm not sure what that is. Neuro-linguistic programming. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a toddler that just decided to come downstairs. <laughs> I don't know if we can pause these or what. But... Uh-uh, I don't think so. Oh, good. Let me cover your face back. Hold on. Give me a second. No okay. child labor laws here. All right, keep going <laughs> while I troubleshoot this. Uh, so neuro-linguistic programming, chai Bo which is a moving meditation practice to relationship counseling. What? (laughs) Yeah. They offered relationship counseling. Okay. Um, Good Nason also opened up the, the edge bodyguard services where he had seminars and school security and combat shooting. A working mom over here. All right, we're good. <laughs> She's been given a peach ring. Let's see how long it'll last. You said they're chewy. She, she should be good for a while. <laughs> she should be good for like a while. It's fine. Um, in 1998, he wanted to amp up the history of the school and make up a backstory for himself. He claimed to be from a 3,000 year old lineage dating back to King Solomon of Israel. Okay. I feel he like statistically he's more likely to be in lineage of Genghis Khan, just given that like 5% of people on the planet can trace their lineage back to Genghis Khan because he was such a hoe. Like, why not claim him? Like, he was kind of an he have, like, awful dude, but I guess he was powerful. Did he have like dozens of children? I don't know much about Genghis Khan. So many. I think he had like hundreds and hundreds of like wives and concubines and, and had oh, just an absolutely okay. disgusting amount of descendants. 
That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, he told students that he had been summoned by a higher power to come to Utah and open a mystery school for the public. He named it the Rocky Mountain Mystery School with the slogan, No More Secrets. The school it's called the Mystery to- School. <laughs> He's like, oh, No more this. secrets. <laughs> Thank you. The school. so sorry we have so many guest stars today the school promised to reveal the great mysteries and the old magic of the ages with classes in alchemy or healing shamanism and er eroticism okay yeah on may 21st 1998 good nason and secrets claimed to have had contact with aliens called nathers whose ship landed in a lake in southern idaho They said that for three weeks, they were shown their technology and asked to share it with the world. At the school, yeah. At the school, they taught DNA activation. In this teaching, they teach that there are 24 strands of DNA, 12 physical and 12 spiritual. Open the schools. (laughs) Open the schools. This practice is similar to Reiki. Um, so Good Nation said he could activate 22 strands and the knowledge to activate the other two were given to him by the aliens. They said the aliens wanted them to activate 20% of the world's population by 2005. We're act- I'm sorry, we're activating the world's population by 2000. 2000- what, what happened in 2005? What was the vibe shift? I don't know. What was it? Was That's that just- when, was that when our, our Holy Trinity, Paris, Brittany and Lindsay were having their, their breakdowns? Roughly, yeah. 2005, 2007. That's like all I could think of. I'm like, 2005, what happened in 2005? The victimization of of those those three celebrities? I don't know. I don't know. I was, I was in fifth grade. grade. I, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I can't believe I was in fifth grade instead of buying property. Students paid $1,100 to attend week-long conferences with seminars of light laser healing technologies, the intergalactic experience, and spells and charms for women only. Okay, cool. All right, so they had a girls club. Spells and charms. I don't know. I hope you guys are enjoying the YouTube. In August 2005, Good Nason registered a business called Spartan Group Agile as a multi-level marketing company to help people reach financial freedom, which it kind of did the opposite. But Yeah. If someone's telling you to pay $10,000 to reach financial freedom, they are scamming you. <laughs> Step one. They're trying to sell you something. <laughs> Step one. Keep the money. Keep the $10,000. One ex-student recalls being asked to take on more and more responsibility for the school by helping to organize events and recruiting hundreds of students, all while unpaid. Um, Like, the main goal for them was to just keep recruiting people, recruiting, recruiting people who would then spend more money, and then um, the school would get, like, a cut of that money. Yeah. So, MLM. Yeah. Um, others claimed being required to carry out cleaning duties while unpaid, and students paid at least $80,000 to maintain their rank, maintain their certification, and get what they considered half-assed training from the teachers. Is it is it reasonable for me to ask, like, what did these people do to have this kind of money laying around that they could spend it know. in magical mystery school? Like, like is, this, is this what, like, Northwest is doing? You well, know? they... Like, with, they... with Kim's credit card. Well, that's what they did. They took out credit cards and loans and maxed oh, everything out. And you could like just do that. Like in 2005, you, you could just get a credit card with a credit limit of like 100K, you know, mm-hmm. and then you could just, yeah. Nope. That makes sense. Yeah. In 2006, Good Nason and Seacrest divorced and he moved to Japan and married Aiko Kuruso. Uh, Kur- Kurosu. He had rebranded his side of the organization as the Modern Mystery School, and students of Good Nason and Seacrest were told to pick between the two to finish their schooling. So these two still owned the school as a whole, the Rocky Mountain School, but then they split, and he named his Modern Mystery School. Okay. Um, so those who did not pick Good Nason were lashed out at and accused of joining the forces of evil. 
if they picked to stick with Seacrest. Is that like the dark arts? The dark arts, yeah. <laughs> They're siding with Snape. <laughs> the modern mystery school hierarchy is split into two paths, the healer and the warrior. The healer path becomes guides and the warrior path becomes ritual masters, but students are required to follow both paths, which just sounds like ridiculous. Like it sounds like, like normally like, I feel like you would pick one or the other if you're right. doing something, but you're required to do both. So you have to pay all these classes, pay for all this equipment and it's triple the money. So that's probably how they're getting more money from these people. Oh, probably. Yeah. It sounds Bernice- very much like Scientology. Yeah. Bernice Van Eck was told that the school lineage included Plato, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, and Winston Churchill. And she learned sacred rituals that she would was told would allow her to communicate with a hierarchy of lights, which is a body of beings bridging the gap between humans and God. Okay. <laughs> the process of going through the school is through initiations that get more expensive as you go. So each rank that you get is called an initiation. Okay. Um, and you can also go on to the school on go on to the school of the mage program, which is a ten which is ten weekends over three years and costs more than eighty thousand dollars. Whoa. Yeah. You can get like undergraduate degrees for less money. Yeah. Ritual masters sign an agreement that they agree that the teachers will push them emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And guides must also sustain from drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. All right. Fair. (laughs) Students were in charge of bringing in more students and would be reprimanded if they failed to meet their goals. (laughs) Toddlers demanding lap time. (laughs) We'll be back. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean, like, you could keep talking. It's just visually, I will be back later. <laughs> Many of them were reduced to tears and threatened of losing their initiations that they paid for and losing income by not teaching classes. The students also needed to buy equipment for classes, such as a set of guide candles for $715, exorcism manual for $227, life activation wand for $195, and an Enoki and dagger for $433, which sounds like something the Winchester brothers would have from Supernatural. Students who pass the Ritual Master 2.5 initiation are required to go to an annual Warriors of Light program, which is a several-day retreat to practice meditation, martial arts, and spells. As of February 2020, the fee was $3,500. Holy shit. Students are encouraged to leave their day jobs and focus primarily on the school and classes, and guides who teach these classes are required to pay a fee from what they make during the classes. People who struggled to pay were simply told to manifest the money, which, okay. Just, just to manifest it? Like, they're like, just yeah, don't get it. a job. Just, like, sit around and think about it. <laughs> One student ran out of money and was stripped of their ritual master rank and told not to come back. And this is where, like I said, people would take out loans and max out credit cards. So, sex had become a big part of rituals as well, saying it heightened their energy by doing sex magic. Reports of coercion and harassment from teachers and good nascent came out, and they told students that it would further their spiritual development and told women that it would be for healing men. This should not come as a surprise, knowing what we know about no. cults. Yeah. Um, from what I was reading, like, he was always getting massages from girls, like, they were always, like, trying to lead girls on. Um, a lot of the girls were, like, put into situations where they were told, like, something bad would happen or, like, they would lose initiation rights and all of this if they didn't go forward with having sex with their teachers. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we're destined to get to this point eventually. I feel like part of being a cult leader or, honestly, at this point, just leading a pyramid scheme is, like, being a predator. Yeah. Well, that is all I have on the Modern Mystery School, which is, I feel like it's a lot. I feel like my cult episodes are always like a lot smashed into. I love that you were like, and that's all I have. And you just like, 
<laughs> that that was like that had like two seasons and fourteen episodes a season. <laughs> That's all, folks. Like that was a lot. That was a lot. I do apologize for those of us that watch us on YouTube. <laughs> I had to account for my my toddler coming in and demanding snacks. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, uh, and I will say, I have headphones in. <laughs> she is not hearing the not child friendly nature of the things we are discussing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was um, that was, and it's I've never heard of that cult before, which is crazy because it sounds huge. I saw like this rumor thing that Miley Cyrus and some other singer was are possibly part of this cult. Miley Cyrus would not surprise me, unfortunately. Like no, Lana but... Del Rey also wouldn't, you know, like not like I'm trying to shade Lana Del Rey. It's just if you were to be like, oh, Lana Del Rey is in the magic. I'd be like, yeah, okay, that tracks, you know, like that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. But yeah, so what do you guys think of that? Like, have you heard of this before? Do you know anybody that was part of it? I feel like with it being so widespread, like we, we've got to have some listeners. Right. Like you got to know someone, you know what I'm saying? Like you've got to know someone who is part of it. If you have any stories to tell or anything like that, you can email us at a little wicked podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on any of our socials, send us a message. Um, I'm always checking it. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I had to have like come into contact with them because I go to a lot of those like mind, body, spirit type expos where it's like all these like practitioners, Reiki people, everything like yeah. that. And like one, like somebody has to be a part of it. My mom, hilariously enough, is actually, she's actually a certified Reiki practitioner. My mom's so funny. She's like Barbie. Um, she, <laughs> she is a personal trainer a certified nutritionist. She is also a um, Reiki, like a certified Reiki practitioner. There's like two or three types of different group fitness certifications that she has. And she's a data engineer. <laughs> so like, my mom's a very interesting person. And she like, my mom will Reiki you if you want it. Like I will never forget the one time I was over and my mom was petting the cat. And she was like, he seems so stressed lately. I should Reiki the cats. And I'm like, how is that just a normal, like, how is this my life? How is that like a normal thing that I hear from my mom? And my mom, like, you're probably like have a picture in your head. Like, oh, I have a crunchy mom. I don't like, not at all. Not like remotely, not in the least bit. She's just like, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I did not yeah. grow up having like lemon instead of medication. You know, like my mom is a very like traditional Western medicine person. She just also reikis the cats, you know, it's called balance. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> The, the, yeah, that's balance. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, well, so let's see here. I think that was mysteriously wicked. I think that was magically wicked. <laughs>